Alright. Okay, your North so North Folk Southern Locomotive Engineering Training um, Handbook, February 2006. Locomotive Control Stand Orientation. As an important part of the locomotive engineer training will be the operating locomotive simulator. In your first simulator active, they'll be very early, early in the class. The following page is an introduction to some of the control locomotive control stands. While there is some difference between locomotives, there are also main common items that are covered in the following pages. Materials intended more as an introduction. It will make the first simulator activities easier. It will help to prepare for the more material than it will be covered in the lesson on air brakes, preparing locomotives for service to dynamic braking, train handling. Your assignment tonight is to read the mu this material and answer the questions at the end. The assignment it will be checked for completeness at the start of the day of Warren Orientation. Locomotive Engineering tra um, Training Staff. Are your controls? One is your multiple unit valve dual ported cutout cock on the left here, and then two would be your um, independent brake valve, three cutout valve, four training of air, air pressure adjusting valve, five automatic brake valve horn, six. Uh, air horn valve 7, air gauges 8, loading current in indicator meter 9, um, control operating switch 10, light dimmer 11, dynamic brake circuit breaker 12, head headlight switch front 13, throttle handle 14, reverse handle 15, silent single light reset button 16, um, attendant call button 17, Headlight switch rear 18, bell ringer valve 19, manual sand lever switch 20, lead truck sand switch 21, indicator light panel 22, uh, dynamic brake handle 23, ground and air light switches, and 24 is your airflow, um, 24 is the airflow meter. All right, the first handle is the lowest handle on the control stand. It is three positions left, centered, and right. The handle is moved to the right. The circuit is set up with the locomotive to move in that direction. The locomotive handle is moved to the left. The locomotive move to move in that dire in the dire in the direction that was the power was applied. With the first handle centered, the mecha me mechanical interlocking prevents movement of the dynamic brake handle, and but the control, but the throttle can be moved in such a case that the power will not be applied with the traction motor. All right, this shows your reverse handle. Um, set up control switch. Set up this control circuits for the operating locomotive in this direction. Set up control circuit for the locomotive in this direction. Neutral and to insert and to remove. Okay. The reverse handle is centered removed from the panel to lock, uh, to lock the throttle in idle position. The dynamic brake handle in the off position. Are your dynamic brake handles in the zero is off? Set up one notch through eight full. I'm going to full notch at eight. Dynamic brake handle is located above the throttle handle. The brake handle is two position off set up, uh, off and set up in operation ranging from one and eight and full th uh, and full through um, through the which the handle moves freely without notching. Mechanical interlocking prevents the dynamic brake handle from being moved uh, out of the uh, off position until unless it is in throttle idle. The reverse position is positioned either forward or reverse position. Caution. During transfer power operation, dynamic braking the throttle must be held in the idle for at least 10 seconds before moving the dynamic brake handle to the setup position. This is to eliminate possibility of sudden surge of the brake effort with the possible train run in or traction motor flashover. All right, your throttle handle, your figures, um, 215. Two, uh, this shows the um, stop and idle the notches one, from 1 through 8. Throttle handle is located just below the dynamic braking handle. It is moved from the right left to increase locomotive power. The throttle handle is 9 position idle and 1 through 8 plus the top position, which is obtained pulling the handle uh, outward, moving it to the right beyond the idle stop of all the engines. In a locomotive consistent mechanical interlocking prevents throttle handle from being moved out of idle over the power position. And when the dynamic brake handle is set up, is, is to set up beyond, um, it can be moved into the stop position to stop all engines that consist in the consist. Throttle handle cannot be moved when the reverse rear level hand handle is centered. Remove the throttle move or and remove from the controller. Locomotive speed indicator accelerometer. 
the accelerometer. The accelerometer is a very useful locomotive engineering tool and tool for a locomotive engineer. It shows the gain and loss of the miles per hour per minute. The number, the positive number three. So it's three. You are gaining three miles per hour. Um, the number is a negative number, such as negative three. You are losing three miles an hour per minute. With the information you make, make the adjustments as needed if you're gaining or losing speed. The 26L air brake equipment. Right, one is your automatic brake valve handle on the top. Three, two is the independent brake valve handle on the two. Three is the cutoff pilot valve. Four is your trainline air pressure adjusting valve. Five, multiple unit valve du dual ported cutout cock of the multiple unit two A. Automatic brake valve handle. Okay. Um, the top shows the different positions of the release minimum reduction service zone when the full service of the suppression handle off in emergency. And it shows the train air pressure adjustments and the cutoff pilot valve to the automatic brake valve. The automatic brake valve handle. The automatic brake valve handle controls the application relief of the both the locomotive of the train brake. The brake valve handle is in the pressure maintaining type with control of the brake pipe reduction constant again for the nominal brake pipe leakage. A brief description of operation positions as follows. Release position. The position is charged for the equipment of release from the locomotive of the train brake. It is located with the handle with the extreme left of the quadrant. Minimum reduction position. The minimum position is located with the handle against the first raised portion of the quadrant right to the release position with the handle moved to the position. A six to eight pound brake pipe reduction is made. Minimum um, braking effort is obtained. Service zone. The position consists of the second handle movement of the right release position. Then moving the handle from the left to right um, through the service zone. The degree of the braking effort is increased until the handle of the extreme right if the sec in this sector. The handle is in full service position. The full service of braking effort is obtained. Suppression position. The position is located with the handle again for the second raised portion of the quadrant right release. Right over the release position, in addition with providing the full service the brake effort with, with the handle with the full service position, it will also recover penalty brake application. Your automatic brake valve. Release minimum reduction full in the service zone um, for the full service and brake minimum reduction release is in the full service zone. And then you have suppression handle off an emergency. Train air pressure adjustment valve cutoff pilot valve. Handle off position. The position is located with the first quadrant notch of the right suppression position. The position in which the handle must be placed for the trailing unit for the multiple unit locomotive or locomotives being towed in the dead of the train. Emergency position. The position is located at the extreme right of the brake valve quadrant. It is the position that can be used with the desired emergency braking application. This position must be used to reset either the desired or undesired brake application cutoff pilot valve. The cutoff pilot valve is located with the automatic brake valve housing directly beneath the automatic brake valve handle. The valve has two positions in and out. The locomotive the operator with the locomotive with the controlling unit with the cutoff valve must be pushed in and rotated into the in position. The out position is used when the making of the brake pipe leakage test trailing units uh, trailing unit and it consists of hauling a locomotive dead in the cons consist. Our train line air pressure adjusting va adjustment valve. The train line air pressure adjustment valve is located with the left of the automatic brake valve handle. On the automatic brake valve handle in the release position is used to obtain the brake pipe pressure desired. The automatic brake valve will, will maintain the selected pressure against overcharge and leak or leakage. Your independent brake valve um, shows the uh, release and service zone with the full application of the pressure lever down to release the automatic application of the locomotive brakes. The handle provides the independent control of locomotive braking effort and inspection in irrespective, irrespective to the train brake effort. The brake valve and self lapping will hold the brake when the brakes are applied. The brief operating description of operation follows release position. The position is located within the handle the extreme left of the quadrant. The position and release for the locomotive brakes provides the automatic brake valve handle in the release position, full application position. Position located with the handle of the extreme right of the quadrant and moving the handle from left to right with the service zone with the degree of the locomotive. The braking effort is increased until the full application brake effort is obtained. Right, the bail off position and depression and depression of the independent brake valve handle wherever the handle is relief of the position will relief of the automatic brake valve brake application existing with the locomotive when the automatic brake application is made with the independent brake valve must be applied for a bailed off for four seconds per locomotive that consists of the end until the brake pipe air quits exhaust exhausting. The and multiple unit two A valve with multiple unit two A valve is located on the lower left hand side of the air brake stand. It is the purpose of setting up the locomotive brake stand the system and lead idle lead trailer dead operations. The position is sh positions are fouls closed in trail. The position in which for the unit is, tra is trailing in the consists open lead or dead. The position is where while when the unit is leading or dead. Or your review questions. Remove the reverse handle. It must be in blank position. The train the air blind adjusting valve with the equalizer reservoir 
is located on the blank automatic brake valve handle. Um, when the transition power dynamic brake, you must wait for at least blank minutes before weighted moving the dynamic brake handle set. Um, dynamic brake handle can be moved out of the reverse lane or, or, or let handles true or false throttle in a total blank position. Locomotive trailing unit automatic brake handle must be in the blank blank position. Independent brake valve fully applied handles in the extreme bu position. Ball off independent bra brake. When automatic brake application is made, blank on blank on the independent brake valve handle. How long does you bail over the independent brake when the automatic brake application is made? Ten. What are the automatic brake was must be played for the position recovered the penalty application and what the tool of the locomotive engineer what is determined whether he or she gains or loses speed. Your north north south locomotive northern so uh, nor, northern southern locomotive engineering train ha trainer handbook. Copyright 2002, Norfolk Southern Corporation. All rights are reserved and no part of this work is covered by the copyrights hereon may be reproduced for the copies and forms by any means geographic, graphic, electronic, mechanical, including photocopying, recording, taping, and information retrieval of the system without written permission of the publisher. Too bad. Introductions to the air brakes. All right, object of the description from the facility wise locomotive engineering training with the air brakes on locomotive of the freight car. The air brake equipment on the freight car which will be discovered. The training will be able to name the five major control valve with the freight cars, explain how they differ and apply with the release for the brakes, and listing the reservoir of the freight cars and list the other components for their function. The training will be able to identify the air gauge associated with the air brake equipment. The description function the training will be able to use the air gauge to recognize the penalty brake application, emergency brake application, be able to recover the from each. The training will be able to name and the desire of the function of the components for the two six L brake equipment the training will be able to name and locate describe the position of the 26L brake equipment the training will be able to name and locate describe the function of the position of the 2XL independent brake valve um, automatic brake valve that brake equipment and independent brake valve the trainer or trainee will be able to locate name and describe the various manual cutout cocks associated with the various locomotive brake equipment additionally the trainee demonstrating his ability to use their equipment on the simulators will be he will be passed a written test making the score of at least 80% all right, your basic air, basics of the air brake. Study of the air brake. Scope. No scope. Uh, no class of the air, railroad employee should be interested in furthering his knowledge of the air brakes. Uh, no class of the railroad employee should be more interested in furthering his knowledge of the air brakes than the locomotive of the engineer. Only this proficiency trailing. Train handling effective knowledge of air brakes must is life is depending on the knowledge, knowing the various types of equipment, how it's set up, with it, how to manipulate, how does it function, what exempt, except from it, what is the limitations are, and how fast to determine the function properly, what to do with it, if it which should fail, also should part of the engineer expertise. We will not concern ourselves with the course internal bore of the passage of the air brake components, but rather that we should consider. We are concerned with the cause of the device to operate result with it should be effective with the operation. If we are if we are to test and operate with the air brakes effectively, we must know that beforehand what will occur during each event. Subject of the train handling is closely associated with the safety of the air brakes since the most of the handling problems arise during the slow, slowing and stopping of the train. We shall learn the certain guidelines that they are accepted with the best operating position practice of given condition. The moderate freight train longer than the heavier, other than faster than any of the predecessors, longer and the heavier the train is placed for the new but demands on only the physical plan, but also the men of the, of their control. Locomotive the engineer successful train handling requires the ability to start and stop the train control slack action with the motion with the changing of the track gaining curves and speed zones, all without accidents or damage to the equipment track landing failure or inability to properly control train speed or slack action may cost all your life. Alright, B. General principle: shoe on the wheel. Ever since man invented the wheel, it has been occupied, developed I mean, a better way to stop. The most common method of using the today's force with a stationary block against the rotating wheel. The more more, more force accepted, reserved the block with the greater with the retarding effect. The block is commonly called the black brake shoe. The purpose of the brake system is for the shoe into contact with the wheel, the varying pressure. Shift the brake pipe pressure on the wheel. The brake sh the shoe must be forced against the tread of the wheel, rim with against the disc of attached for the wheel of the axle. The road, uh, railroad application of the shoes are forced against the wheel tread as shown here. Brake shoes may be made of a cast iron composite material that will produce the high friction whatever the substance of the shoes intended to acquire the wear or not of the wear wheel. Are the friction caused by per per pressure stationary, stationary shoe with against the rotating wheel creates with considerable heat? The heat is observed by the wheel as well as the, as the shoe during the short period of the brake. The heat will dissipate no, and no, cause no damage. However, the prolonged braking can cause serious damage for the wheel. 
In most at break application, the force is not applied directly to the shoe, but it is transmitted through rods and levers. The edge of advantage is taken law, laws of levers in the order to increase the force applied with the brake shoe when keeping the power requirement minimum and less than the learned in horses, wagons, air with the Armstrong power was used in stopping. For this, of the effect of the, effect of the leverage, um, 10 pounds on a falcon, one half, and then to the, fi, fi, um, the um, brake shoe, 10 pounds into one half, the one in falcon, 15 pounds. Alright, air pressure. Air pressure. When inverted with air pressure, the power brake system and another means can be made as to add, increase regulate regulate the brake shoe pressure by increasing the area on which the air pressure acts. The brake shoe pressure um, can be increased. The air pressure is also given the pound square inch or psi by increasing the area where the air pressure acts, and the total pressure can be increased. Right, this shows the um, three two and a quarter inches square inches, ten psi, two for twenty four pounds of pressure. Area of nineteen point six square inches, ten pounds of square pressure, pressure one hundred ninety six pounds of square pressure. Next, we see two brake cylinders. The one at the left of the piston area only with the ten square inches. The ten pound of the air pressure applied with each of the square inches. The total pressure was a hundred pounds. The same with the ten psi applied with the cylinder on the right. But if the piston has an area of thirty square inches, the ten pounds applied with each of the square inch of the total pressure is that shows three hundred pounds. For this reason, they we find the heavier cars of the larger cylinders more than one cylinder increase the area. All these things may be more taken into consideration when designing a car locomotive brake in order to supply with the uniform brake effort throughout the train. Our effective area, this shows the brake cylinder at 10 psi, 10 square inches, 10 psi at 30 square inches, 100 and 300 pounds. Um, let's look at the typical brake cylinder to see how the air pressure is used to exert the force to lever the consequently the brake shoe. However, the piston is the left which moves the cylinder where no air pressure is applied. The piston held in the position by the release spring at the brake shoe that are held away from the wheel with the piston rod is moved out and in the position. A packing cup is snapped off over the piston to guard it against the leakage. Should any of the pressure um, leak, then the piston, a breather, and in the non pressure head will allow it to vent the atmosphere. Or this is the AB 10 inch brake cylinder assembly. Show the pressure head packing cup cylinder piston release spring, non head pressure piston rod, and breather. When the air pressure is directed with the cylinder, it quickly filled with the space between the piston and the piston, um, piston and the pressure head. Only two psi, uh, only two and three pieces, two, only two to three psi is required to overcome the release spring and the start of the piston moving forward to the right. The cylinder volume increased with the piston and the rod moved outward in the cylinder from the pressure head of the packing cup cylinder piston, piston rod non-pressure head breather. The piston will continue to move outward until the shoe contacts the wheel. Only two or three psi of pressure will overcome spring pressure. As the volume between the pressure head of the piston increases, the more of the air pressure must be supplied. The cylinder pressure will not increase with the noticeable ability on the brake shoe contact with the wheel, but the all slack is taken up with the rod and leverage. At this point, the piston rod will extend outward, same distance of the piston with the travel. When the resistance with the brake shoe, with the preventing of the further movement, the air pressure will build up in the cylinder, increase the air pressure, increase the force of the brake shoe. The brake cylinder is an example of the air pressure acting against the spring pressure with no movement that take place for the air pressure outside of the piston exceed with the spring pressure on the side. In the cause, in this case, for the brake cylinder. When we use the very little spring, only two to three pounds, but if it does not wish for the device to make of the higher pressure was obtained, we could um, use stronger spring. A simple device that moves the air pressure applied with either side of the double check valve. This consists of closing the fitting of the check that slides back and forth with the cylinder having three pipe connections. The upper view of the air pressure for the entering left side following the independent brake valve hand, brake valve with the pressure purchased for the check through the right ceiling and the pipe connection closed on the side and it would also allow the air pressure in the cylinders to flow downward to apply the brakes. Alright, show the downward air pressure of the double check valve. Two different ports and think about um, a piston sliding um, hydraulic diagram. Air pressure into the right side when you have the automatic brake valve with the check is pushed to the left and cutting of the independent brake valve shutting off the lower the view. The air pressure for the automatic system will then flow down to the air brakes and it can be seen that there whichever the brake pressure is greater will control the brake application. All right, volumes. No, now that we can see have seen how air pressure with the G with the cover of the device, life of investigated another item with which we with the must be familiar with in order to understand air brakes. This is the flow of the air pressure container with a given volume and then into another container of a different volume. However, we see that the container reservoir on the left has charged at seventy psi 
and the air pressure from the pipe connects to the lower reservoir left container through the right valve, but valve of the um, pipe is closed. There's no pressure from the container on the right side of the scene, but by the gauge of the container on the left holding two and a half times the volume of the container on the right. Now if we open the valve between the two tanks, the air pressure will flow with the large tank contained with the air pressure at 70 psi into the smaller tank with no pressure. The air pressure drops in the larger tank and it would be up in the smaller tank, build up in the smaller tank. Let's close the valve as soon as the gauge in the large tank drops to 60 psi. Question. Now will the gauge on the smaller tank read? Since the large tank has two and a half times the volume from the small tank, each pound, one pound, flow for the large tank, registering at two and a half pounds when the confined with the smaller tank, then those ten pounds of the large tank will be registered as twenty five pounds on the gauge on the smaller tank. If we reopen the valve and allow the pressure of the large tank to drop with another ten pounds down to fifty psi, how much pressure would be shown on the gauge to the small tank? Again, each pound of the large tank would register at two and a half pounds to the smaller tank so that the ten pounds would increase to another 25 pounds, a total of 50 pounds, however, the, uh, but now we have arrived at an important fact. What happened if we were allowed, to valve, if we allowed the valve to reopen, remain open? Nothing. Since the pressure remaining in the large tank is at 50 psi and the pressure in the small tank has risen to 50 psi, both tanks have equal pressure, no airflow between the tank, between them. The state of the equal pressure is called equalization. We shall see this later and how it will affect, greatly affect the braking ability on, on a train. RC history of air brakes, straight air brake system. First power brakes were applied without only the locomotive when operated with the steam pressure related to moment of steam pressure to drive the air pump and the air pressure to be in use the brake power. It was until 1869 when the George Westinghouse was designed with a system that would be applied with the power brakes of the cars well of the was well the locomotive. The system employed steam driven air compressor has pumped the air into the larger storage of the tank of the reservoir on the locomotive. The engineer had a straight air valve where he could direct the air pressure with the reservoir, the straight air pipe that each the car was provided with a pipe that extended full length of the car and had shortage of the flexible hose at each for the end of the coupling adjacent with the cars. When the train is made up with all hoses were connected with the valve cocks and were opened between the cars and the locomotive with the cocks at each end of the train were closed to prevent the loss of air pressure. When the engineer moved the straight over the air valve with the locomotive to apply the air brake, the air pressure flow over the reservoir into the straight air pipe through the train and on each of the lo car, car locomotive with the branch pipe of the straight air line led the into air into the cylinder. Air pressure from the cylinder acted on the, on a movable piston which connected with the brake chute through the rods and lever. The engineer controlled the amount of pressure in the straight line by a length of the time the valve main re remained open. The, the, when they felt the brakes, they were applied sufficiently and removed the handle straight up to close the, off the flow of the air. Or this shows the straight air brake applied with the air compressor going into the straight air valve and then to the cylinders on the wheels with the cocks and coupling hosings and from locomotive to the car and straight air pipe. Um, both cylinders on the car and locomotive. When train speed was slowed and stopped, the engineer desired to release the brake. He turned the straight air valve with the release of the air pressure from the straight air pipe. The pressure escaped from the cylinders. A return spring pushed back and piston and the shoes were pulled away from the wheels. Straight air brake released. This releases the air from the piston um, from the air compressor releasing the brake shoe or right, this was much more safer method of the operating train brake for applying with the handbrakes relied on the uh, relied on a heavy on, heavily on an air compressor. If the air compressor failed, the train could not be stopped. Like why if the train broke apart or the pipe of the hose burst, no pressure could be built when the, up in the system so that the brakes could not be applied. Another problem was encountered with the long trains because of the increased volume of the straight air pipe. The system was not. Fail, fail safe but because of the failure resulted in the loss of the brakes in 1872 George George Westinghouse designed the system to overcome these deficiencies reverse the flow of air pressure in the pipe when applying the releasing the pipe um, brakes in the system the air pressure was forced into the pipe to release the brake it was necessary to maintain the pressure in that pipe to hold brake released to apply the brakes the air pressure had to be vented out of the pipe this was called the automatic brake system. The brakes may be would be applied without the manual operation in the event of the failure. So the same basic principle is used on all railroads today. All right, the release of the automatic brake shows the um, front of the air pressure going all the way to the back. The automatic brake system applied shows the um, the brake going from the front to the front of the back to the locomotive in the automatic brake system. All right, it's, uh, it is still a single pipe system with the pipe performed with the additional function beside the single application relief of the brake. The pipe carries air pressure to each for the car charging a reservoir. 
To make a system work, the valve of the reservoir were added to each of the, each car and the adi addition of the brake cylinder. The valve is at the heart of the system. It reacts with the charge, uh, change of the air pressure to the, in the pipe and the charges, charge the air pressure and apply the brakes and release the brakes. Car 1, brake valve um, pressure cylinders. Car 2, brake valve, um, brake pipe valve cylinders. As you can see, the connection by the hose to the car 1, car 2 also has a um, reserve in a cylinder. All right, your description of a triple valve. Charging and relief of the valve is controlled with the charging and applying with the release of the brake with a call with the triple valve consists of the cylinder containing the tight fitting of the piston with a move slide valve with the difference. The piston was called to move with the difference and the pressure of the air pressure into the cylinder of the brake pipe before the piston to move the right. In this position, the chain charging port groove was uncovered, allowing the air pressure to flow under the piston into the chamber over the over the valve. The air pressure would also flow out of the pipe connection reverse call with the auxiliary reservoir. Eventually, the pressure became equal on both sides of the piston auxiliary reservoir. This took several minutes because of the small opening of the charge port. While in this position, the valve connected with the brake cylinder pipe with the exhaust open opening. Or this shows the um, charging relief of the brake cylinder, returning spring of the piston, going pushing the air into the. Um, um, charging um, the exhaust valve of the pit um, in, in the piston and the triple valve and the charge port and brake pipe into the auxiliary auxiliary reservoir. Two applications: to apply the brakes, apply air pressure with the of the brake pipe, and then left left side of the portion so if the pressure could not flow back with the charging port the quickly as the brake pipe pressure would reduce. The higher pressure would exit the right side of the piston. This could go for the piston, remove the left, pulling the slide of the valve of the piston, holding in the slide valve mask with the brake cylinder pipe. And air pressure from the sliding valve chamber, the auxiliary reservoir could flow into the brake cylinder. Air pressure flowing from the brake cylinder would cause the drop in the pressure for the right side of the, of the piston. Pressure building up the brake cylinder acted on, on the piston to force it outward against the light spring tension. Three, the lap. When we, um, once again, we'll show the show the surface application moving from the auxiliary reservoir and the three port charge port charging port with the piston moved back out and then in through the ports of the piston into the um, brake cylinder reserve. Or lap when reduction of the brake pipe pressure has been stopped, the auxiliary reservoir pressure will continue with the flow of the brake cylinder until the pressure on the right side of the triple valve piston of the slightly less than the remaining of the brake. The higher the brake pipe pressure, the left the, then we'll move on the piston and remove the right just far enough to do the colors off the connection with the brake cylinder. All right, if, if in if in in the position all ports are closed and the valve is said to be lamped, the brake pipe pressure is further reduced and the piston valve will move will again move to application. The brake pipe pressure will increase and the piston will valve will move to release. If the brake pressure is increased, the piston and the valve move to release. So this is your lap. This is kind of like equal pressure, I guess. Um, it cannot. It cannot be. It cannot. It can be noted that the auxiliary reservoir is charged only with the triple valve in the release position. At the time of the all cylinder pressure, the relief is known as the direct release brake. Brakes cannot be released in small increments. A difference in local movement of the car brakes. We have now seen the reserve uh, reservoir must be charged on each of the car before the brake can be applied. The air pressure for the charging of the reservoir must come from the locomotive where the air pressure is located. The main reserve is where the air pressure for the initially store is located in the locomotive. If we use the air pressure for the main reserve of the locomotive the brake of the cylinder, we would have an unlimited supply of the because of the air compressor would immediately replenish. However, if the case of the, of the car brake, we have very limited supply of air pressure auxiliary reserve. We can only be a um, be replenished when the brake of valve brakes are released. We have determined that the auxiliary reservoir brake um, the auxiliary reservoir pressure does not increase the quick quickly as the brake pipe pressure because it must flow through the restricted change charging port. For this reason, the amount of air pressure that has been used to each of the brake application in the car is primarily interested in the, in the into the engineer. It must be replaced with entirely reduce the effectiveness of the next brake application. Alright, your ratios. A definite relationship that exists between the volume of the auxiliary reservoir and the brake cylinder. The volume relation volume relationship is two and a half to one. In other words, the auxiliary reservoir is two and a half and two and one and a half times larger than the brake cylinder. There, here we we have two tanks. The tank on the left side two and a half times for the volume of the smaller tank on the right. Okay, so one your uh, auxiliary reservoir and your brake cylinder. Fully charged, it would be closed the um, the um, brake cylinder, well, auxiliary reservoir for the, the brake cylinder, and then the, um, a certain hundred pounds would give you um, a reduction, 
and equalization is equal open um, where the tanks have both. It lets the boat with the larger tank can be filled with the water with the pipe at the top of the valve A above the tank open when it will and they'll release the water into the main pipe of the tank is empty. It will take about seven minutes to complete the filled tank with 80 inches of water. The smaller the tank on the right can only be filled with the larger tank. Remember that the larger tank cannot be refilled while any of the water is present in the small tank. When the large tank completely filled with it to 80 inches, let's open the bottom valve B to allow uh, water to flow with the large tank and the smaller tank. As, as the water level drops to the large tank, it will raise into the small tank, which we, we shall close the valve B when the water level is dropped in 10 inches to the larger tank. The question how far did the water rise in the small tank? 25 inches. Every inch of the large tank equals 2.5 inches of the small tank. 10 inches of the 2 and times 2.5 is 25 inches. Let's repeat the operation when releasing. If we open the valve with a B again to allow the other 10 inches to drop the large tank from 70 to 60, we find that the level of the um, small tank rises 50 inches again, two and a half inches increase and increases each one drop, one inch drop. We now find the levels approaching either 16 large and, and small tank. No. Alright, if we open valve B now, allow it to remain open, we will find water and will only drop in about 3 inches to large tanks to 57 and will rise in small tanks to 7 inches to 57. As both points are equal, no more um, water will flow between the tanks. Relating to the auxiliary bra reservoir brake cylinder, we find that an 80 pound charge of an auxiliary reservoir will attain a maximum cylinder pressure from a 23 pound and reduction equalization occurs at 50, 57 pounds. Now we see what happened. If we would not allow sufficient time for the reservoir to completely recharge, remember that no water can, could flow into the large tank reservoir while any water was present in the small tank cylinder. By releasing the wall, we shall dump all the water from the small tank in the open valve A to begin with recharging the large tank. The level in the large tank will rise slowly. If we decide to reapplication uh, re before the large tank is completely filled, we will notice the difference in the level equalization. Suppose we started the application, the large tank increases to 70 instead of 80. When the valve B opened, the level of the, of the large tank lowered to 10 inches to 60. We got the same amount, but as before the small tank, 25 inches, but now we are far from the equalization. If we lower the level in the large tank another 10 inches to 50, we will see an increase in the small tank up to 50 and a new equalization level. Relating to the uh, fact of the auxiliary reservoir on a brake cylinder, we find that the equalization point consistently with the maximum brake cylinder pressure is directly dependent on the state of the charge of the auxiliary reservoir. It should be apparent that the reapplication is initiated by a long time for the whole recharge of the auxiliary reservoir. It will be necessary to make a great reduction of the, of the, of the of, of obtaining equalization 57 to 50 in case of the discussed in the case you just discussed. Another fact is that remember no pressure will flow from the auxiliary reservoir to the brake cylinder until the brake pipe pressure is reduced below the in the in that of the auxiliary reservoir. Alright, two piston travel shows B and C valves. A is an open and release valve. You have cylinder A, B, and C. Two to one, three to one, and main. So far we have the discussion of the state charge of the two given volumes. We said that the only one has two and a half times larger than the other. Actually, the only true one in the piston is normal, nominal, eight inches in most cars. What would be effective and the piston extends out to 10 inches, maybe only 5 inches. When the volume of the cylinder is charged with the ratio between the auxiliary reservoir and cylinder will be also changed. However, here we have the tank of the representing with the auxiliary reservoir as before when, but with this time we shall increase the volume with the brake cylinder similar to what would happen if the piston traveler were excessive. Now the auxiliary reservoir is only 2 times larger than the brake cylinder instead of the unusual 2.5 times. If open with the close, open with the valve B with the before to allow the tanks to drop in a large tank, then close with the valve B. For the, however, the water would go into the small tank. Only 20 inches, not 25, is before this cover the change in ratio. And apparently, the, the, from this, the longer the piston the travel, the lower, lower this, there will be the brake cylinder pressure. All right, question. When the change in the ratio affects the equalization pressure, let's see if the, we will drop the level of the reservoir of the 10 down to 60, and it would need to increase the reservoir to 20 up to 40. But this will still consider the way of the equalization. Let's open B again to drop the reservoir level to another 5 down to 55. Cylinder will increase to 10 up to 55. Now we will. Add, we, now we are closer. If the open valve B allow it to remain open, the reservoir will drop the, about 53 and a half, and the cylinder will increase the about 53 and a half. 
Alright, this should be the provide, proof two points that this that we get less braking effort with a longer piston travel at 10 pound reduction at 25 pounds of the BC with normal travel at 20 pound BC with longer travel. The equalization point with the maximum cylinder pressure is lower than a longer piston travel, 57 pound normal travel, 53 and a half longer travel. Just opposite would be true with the piston travel the shorter than the normal, however the smaller brake cylinder that is only one third of the size of the auxiliary reservoir causing the ratio of 3 to 1 for each of the 10 drop in the reservoir where he will get 30 inches in increase for the brake cylinder, 20 inch drop to 260 will cause the cylinder to rise to 60 if we have already reached the equalization now we see the short piston travel will cover the greater braking ever also raise the um, point of equalization. Since it's impossible to maintain piston travel the exact length with the specified the brake equipment, the engineer must be aware of the fact that the brake cylinder pressure will vary from the car to car for the train. It's equally important to know that the equalization point will according to the piston travel. RF, service and emergency application. Monitor control valves are constructed to re respond to two rates of the brake pipe and reductions. One rate is control of the established where the air pressure is moved through the brake pipe to the exhaust at about 550 feet per second. This is the normal rate of the air pressure movement of applying the brake for, the slow down, for a slowdown or stop is called a service application. Service application consists of one of the more reductions than the brake pipe pressure and original with the, with the initial reduction, which was, does must not be less than 6 pound, 68 pounds reduction. After the initial reduction, the brake pipe can be reduced in the amount with the reduction stopped at will. As the service re uh, application is terminated when the brakes are relieved, the rate of the brake pipe reduction sees the service of the emergency application will result once the rate is in serve. Since the control valve of the vent valve is well prop propagated throughout the train to a very rapid rate, control valves and vent valves are constructed so that it causes a large opening of the brake pipe, brake pipe whenever the rapid, ra rapid reduction sends. Once the opening is made, all other control vent valves are open and with a rapid succession. Ra reduction can be no longer the control of the brake pipe pressure to drop zero the brake pipe pressure cannot be restored not brakes restored nor brakes released at, until all the vent control valves have been closed this takes about 90 seconds no attempt should ever be made to release the brakes until the train is completely stopped after an emergency application is initiated, an emergency application can be stored at any point with the train. This may be called the train part of the broken pipe hole hose separation sticking vent control valve and intentional created by the manual operating with the emergency valve and or automatic brake valve. An undesired emergency or UQ, um, UQ, UQA is caused by a defective vent valve with control valve. The equipment is intended to create an emergency application whenever the, any of the other conditions exist. Our components of the brake system. Each moving moving equipment must have the same some of the method of the controlling speed to stop it. The same methods are you the mechanical, hydraulic, and electric and air. Many of you have experience with the moving the equipment that required you for the air brakes to control speed. Although you have the control of the speed of the car with the hydraulic brake system, you for the mechanical parking brake. A simulator will give yet a chance to familiarize yourself with the proper you for the air brake. The air brake is an apparatus which is compressed with the air and is employed with the force braking shoe against the wheel of the locomotive in the car. It is used to stop and control the speed of the locomotive and train. Some components for the air brake system are. Compressor, storage tank, main reservoir, pipe valves, controller, gauges, brake rigging, cylinder, and shoes. Major piping and components of the freight car equipment. Brake pipe, often referred to as the train line, consists of one and a quarter inch pipe extending for the entire length of each of the car, locomotive, or entire train crossover pipe, branch pipe, the smaller one and a half one inch pipe bracket branching off the brake pipe, the control valve of the pipe will contain a cutout cackle the cutting out the brakes of the individual car control valve. The valve receives air with the brake pipe through the crossover pipe, directs the air through various reservoirs on the car during charging. The valve also directs the air into the brake cylinder during the brake applications will direct the air from the brake cylinder to the atmosphere through the retainer valve during a brake release. The type of controller valves on the freight cars AB controller valve. To show the AB emergency portion, the AB valve, and the AB service portion. The oldest type of the control val valve in service in the freight cars and the AB control valve is replaced from the old triple K valve starting in the 1940s and found not on less than 10% of the freight cars. On um, the control valve for feature of the quick surface during the minimum surface application for the means for the control valve will reduce the brake pipe locally at 6 to 8 pounds when the sense of the charge change of 3 pounds or more as during the release of the emergency reservoir not to distribute it, disturb the um, during the surface application to help charge the auxiliary reservoir this allows the brake pipe pressure to build up quicker than releasing the brakes. 
your ABD control valve. You have the emergency portion and the ABD emergency portion, the ABD valve, and the ABD service portion. The control valve starting with appearing with the freight cars 1967 is found on approximately 57 with the freight cars service today with the North South, Northern Southern, North Folk Southern. The control valve operated with a similar AB valve during the brake application, but will cover the much quicker with the release for the brake zone of the train. Anytime the brake pipe reduces to 10 pounds more, the emergency reservoir will be released into the brake pipe. When brake is released, the rapid rise of the brake pipe pressure on the first car quickly causes the chain reaction to rest for the car throughout the train, and a much quicker release of the brake is applied. This is called accelerated release. The ABW ABDW um, control valve, ABDW emergency portion, ABDW valve, ABD service portion. Control valve was introduced in 1974. At present, it's found that approximately 40% of the northern southern fleet and uh, North Folk Southern fleet. And the difference between AB and ABD control valve is that it will cover the brakes and apply faster. The control valve will exhaust air from the brake pipe locally at each car as long as there is being exhaust. Air is being exhausted. The automatic brake valve of the locomotive during a brake release it will act as similar to the ABD control valve. The ABDX control valve, ABDX valve. The control valve was introduced in interest, industry 1994. The ABDX latest generation control valve is designed better control modern freight trains than are heavier operated with a higher speed. The control valve increased with the service brake the transmission speed through the train faster than the ABD valve. The valve also has the improved stability to insist re reduction of the undesired emergency application of the UDE. The DB6 the control valve, the DB20 emergency portion, DB30 pipe bracket, and DB10 service portion show the DB60 valve. The DB60 control valve was introduced in the industry in 1994. The valve manufactured with New York Air Brake Company has featured similar ABDX and is also has increased the transmission speed of the ABDX. The DB60 valve utilized with the poppet valves inside of the slide valves to control the brakes. Reservoirs on the freight car. Auxiliary reservoirs. There, this, this is a 2,500 cubic inch reservoir air, uh, or 10.5 gallons air reservoir is directed by the control valve of the brake cylinder during the surface of the brake application. Your emergency reservoir for 3,500 cubic inches or 15.5 gallons of reservoir during the emergency brake application. The reservoir combines auxiliary reservoir to grave increase with the brake cylinder pressure. Also, during the release of the brake, the reservoir helps to recharge the auxiliary reservoir on the brake pipe depending on the type of the control you use. The brake cylinder. Cylinder of the, the cylinder of the 630 cubic inches or 2.7 gallons in which the air auxiliary with the emergency reserves acts on the piston transmitting force of the brake rigging. Retainer valve. The air brake cylinder exhaust through the valve during the brake release. This valve will properly set retard to prevent the brake cylinder exhaust from either after release with the auxiliary reserve of the emergency reserve and the brake pipe being charged, recharged. Most retainer valves have three positions. They are EX exhaust. Or vertical down. This normal direct exhaust. And this will no. This is normal direct exhaust. Will exhaust in the air brake cylinder quickly. HP high pressure, 45 degree angle below horizontal. Will retain 20 pounds of air with the brake pipes. In, will retain 20 pounds of brake in the air pressure. And SD slow direct all exhaust, 40 degrees above the horizontal. This position will exhaust all the air brakes in the cylinder in about 87 to 90 seconds. Alright, um, and the entire brake is considered fully charged with the auxiliary reservoir with the emergency reservoir charged with the same value of the pipe with regards to the, of the pressure. The pressure on the head car can be almost the same as the feed valve setting on the locomotive with the tent tampering no more than 15 pounds of the rear of the feed train. Feed valve setting listed in the end north, so, northern, northern, southern, Norfolk, southern one rules of the equipment and operation. What we'll cause the brake to apply? To apply the brake, the brake pipe must be reduced. Any time the brake pipe is reduced on three pounds or more of the auxiliary reservoir pressure, the control valve will all allow volume of the air to flow with the auxiliary reservoir to the brake cylinder. How much brake cylinder pressure can be developed? The least amount of the brake cylinder pressure that can be developed is 10 pounds. This is called with the minimum brake at reduction of 6 to 8 pounds or less. The control valve is designed to recognize the brake pipe reduction as small as 3 pounds. When the control valve recognizes a small reduction, it will go quick and interpret the movement of the quick surface to each of the car through the train will reduce the brake pipe 6 to 8 pounds depending on the length of the car. The reduction is enough to cover the least 10 pound brake cylinder pressure. See? So bear in mind that no matter how small the reduction, 3 pounds or more, it will always cause at least 10, at least 10 pound brake cylinder pressure. 
After initial time bound break, cylinder application cover the quick surface action on each of the car. The further brake pipe production will cover the equal amount over the airflow for the out of the auxiliary through the control valve into the brake cylinder. Since the auxiliary never nearly um, four times as large uh, an area of the brake cylinder, each of the pound, pound of the level leaving the auxiliary reservoir at first surface but will develop with two and a half pounds on pressure for the brake cylinder. Transfer of the air from the auxiliary reservoir continued with the brake pipe has been reduced enough to cover the brake cylinder auxiliary reservoir to equalize this. Also, uh, this is all the brake pressure that can be obtained by servicing brake application. The equalization can be attained reducing the amount of the brake pipe pressure on the each of the car. Approximately 30% of the brake pipe pressure for the rear car with the somewhat lower than the head car, maybe as much as 15 pounds. In order to cover the brake to equalize the go to the full surface of the rear car, it was as well the head of the car as much the brake pipe with the pressure reducing by 30%. Um, so if the rear car is 75, po- fo- 75 pounds, you'll need to reduce the brake pipe pressure 22.5 pounds lower to the 52.5. The two methods have accomplished one watch the head of the train until the pressure of the dro- rear drops 30%. To reduce the brake pipe pressure on the head and 35 pounds leave the 55 pounds on the air of the air on the brake pipe, which is important to discuss later. Of the air brakes in the pipe to term um, in the train to be applied with the soil service equalization. Did you already squeeze medicine on these ends? Uh-huh. Oh, cool. With 55 pounds of the head on the rear of the can be higher than 55 pounds less on the rear. This will cover the equalization after the equalization brake cylinder auxiliary reserve is obtained on each of their. Only one way to obtain the brake cylinder pressure for the cause of the emergency brake application. An emergency brake application is caused by venting the air over the brake pipe when very rapidly controlling the valve with each of the car sense of the very rapid drop of the brake pipe pressure it acts come by an emergency reservoir which still is charged to its original valve, valve the auxiliary reservoir. No, the auxiliary, now the auxiliary reservoir is again hi- higher than the brake cylinder will increase the brake cylinder pressure approximately 20%. In order to obtain emergency application, we must have a sufficient amount of the brake pipe pressure to make um, brakes apply with emergency. Um, should, you should, we should have at least 35 pounds of brake pipe pressure from the load of the valve. The exhaust may not be rapid and open enough to cause the emergency brake application. Are your freight by freight car brakes on a typical 50 feet foot 50 foot freight car equipped with the AB valve with equipment air capacity emergency reservoir 2.07 feet cubic inches 3588 and gallons 15.5 auxiliary 1.4 1.41 cubic feet, 2,440 2, cubic inches, 10.5 gallons, brake pipe, 40, um, 44 hundredths of the foot, cubic foot, 770 cubic inches, 3.3 gallons, totals 3.92 cubic feet, 6.798 cubic inches, 2.93 gallons, 29.3 gallons, Brake cylinder 10 times 8 is 36, um, 36, 628, and 2.7. The brake cylinder pressure, typical valves from initial brake pipe pressure, um, 70, 70, 75, 90, and 100, and 110 psi. The brake pipe initial fa- final difference in full surface application, auxiliary initial, emer- initial final emergency, initial final emergency application, brake cylinder. Cylinder pressure initial final service. Are the show of the brake site cylinder auxiliary reserve at 1.4 feet cubed to emergency reservoir 2.0 foot cubed AB control valve exhaust to the brake pipe cutout valve and the retainer valve. How long does it take for the, the brake apply? The amount of time to apply for the brake of the route of the train depends upon the length of the time, train with the time, type of the control valve when making the surface application air travel through the brake pipe to minimum 500 feet per second. Like, for example, let us the brake of the 50 car train each for the car may be 50 feet long. However, the brake pipe is either 80 or 8, 6 to 8 pounds of the cause of the air, each car to produce the brake pipe locally at 6 to 8 pounds. The signal for each for the car to produce the brake pipe locally travel through the train at 500 feet, feet per second. The brake of the first car would, would begin with immediately, but would have taken about 25 seconds to build up 10 pounds of pressure. But this would five seconds before the 50th car received the signal. This would um, this would make the same amount of time build up with the brake cylinder pressure at car number one. Let's apply the brakes to the same 50 car length with a 15 pound of the brake pipe pressure reduction. The first six and eight pound of the reduction would exhaust the glo- would be exhausted locally at each car. Remainder of the reduction would have to travel to ex- travel to the exhaust at the point of the reduction was made with the on an AB or ABD control valve. The brakes on the first car would start start um, applying immediately, but would take about 30 seconds to build up the maximum pressure 38 pounds. The rear would take about five seconds to start the applying, since the air of the second half of the reduction must travel and exhaust at the point of the reduction. It was be, it, it would be possible to take 35 seconds to build up the same amount of the brake pressure on the rear car on the on the first track car on the first car. car. 
As great obj- uh, reduction was caused with the higher brake cylinder buildup, the equalization was obtained, so we can satisfy, say, safely say the higher, longer the train, the heavier the application, the longer it would take to fully apply the brakes to the entire train. How does it? Uh, how long does it take the brakes to apply with emergency? When applying the brakes to the emergency brake application, the aid for the emergency single travel the train approximately 900 feet per second. The supply of the brakes emergency 100 car train separating the air hose between the locomotive and the first car. They immediately rush for the atmosphere caused with the control valve on the head car to emergency. Um, go to to go to emergency. The control valve of each such successive car is going to emergency. The brake and head of the first car would be start to apply immediately, but it would take it about nine seconds to build up the full brake cylinder pressure, approximately 77 pounds, with a fully charged system carrying carrying. How long does it take the brakes to apply the emergency continued 90 pound, um, carrying 90 pound brake pipe during the first one half, one and one half, one, one and one half seconds of the, after emergency is recognized, the control valve, the 15 pound brake pressure is the same during the next four second, four second, the brake cylinder pressure builds up to 45 pounds and builds up to the maximum during the three and a half seconds. The emergency application provided through the train at 900 feet per second, about the five and a half to six seconds after the brakes are started applying with the first car, then being getting to apply on the hundredth car, then they would take it about nine seconds to develop the full brake cylinder pressure failure of the brakes to fully apply with the emergency at a hundred car train with 15 seconds are good is a good average. How does the it take to release the how long how, what does it take to release the brakes? In order to get the brakes on the, on the car to release, we must raise the brake pipe pressure higher than the auxiliary reservoir pressure. Cars equipped the AB valves are newer will start releasing when the brake pipe pressure is only one and a half to two pounds higher than the auxiliary reservoir pressure. How long does it take to release the brake on the train? Depending on the length of the train, the amount of brake pipe um, made. Let's take about a 50 car train that's carrying 90 pounds of the brake pipe pressure. They cut the brake um, it's down the train to apply with full service brake application. Would take about 26 pounds of brake pipe reduction. The brake pipe auxiliary reservoir brake cylinder will equalize at approximately 64 pounds. To release the brake for the equalization reach, we had only have the raise of the brake pipe pressure one half to two pounds to get them to release the, on the first car. This wave of the air signal would to travel to the end of 50 cars in about five seconds. Then the AB track breaks about four seconds, and the ABD and newer breaks because of the accelerated release. Our application without recharging. What happens if the brakes are applied with more than once without giving the system time to recharge? We know that the brake pipe pressure can be restored by the auxiliary reservoir pressure of the apparent with the watching the air gauges on the lead unit move and locomotive that would made with a 15 pound brake pipe production from a 90 pound brake pipe. There would be 75 pounds of auxiliary reservoir pressure, approximately 28 to 34 pounds with brake cylinder pressure. Since it's necessary to restore only a part of the 15 pounds or one and a half to two pounds to release the brakes, it's possible that a 90 pound brake pipe reduction pressure indicated that on the lead unit engaged if the auxiliary reservoir pressure remains lower than because the system has not fully charged. If at any time, if at this time the second brake application should be made, the brakes may fail to apply unless the brake pressure is again reduced below the auxiliary pre- reservoir pressure. Since the auxiliary reservoir is not fully charged at the time, less of the brake cylinder pressure obtained with the wood because of the fully charged auxiliary reservoir, the same differential pressure occurs every time the brake has released and again with applied such as the reside and a reapplication occurs with the often then without allowing the recharging time. This re- result could cause store sh- shortage of the air pressure for the auxiliary reservoir. When necessary to reapply the brakes before the air system recharge, we must ensure that the brake pipe pressure of the again fails below the auxiliary reservoir pressure at least five three pounds proper rate with the north the north folk southern one required the subsequent brake pipe reduction in beef five pounds greater than the total amount of the last reduction in order to activate a quick service feature of the control valve and above the uh, example of 15 pound reduction was made this would require a 20 pound initial reduction if the brakes had to be replied before the system was properly recharged the 26L air brake equipment found on road locomotives and units in service in the north folk southern system Show the automatic brake valve valve handle. The regulating valve handle on the left side not showing in this view. The brake valve cutoff valve on double heading cocking and independent brake valve handle. The 26L automatic brake valve. 26L brake equipment consists of the two or three air gauges um, and the and the ampage gauge, for example. To show the main reserve equalizer reservoir with zero um, brake cylinder brake pipe um, and the airflow indicator with long, with long, as well as well as the um, amps brake power. Some locomotives have two duplex gauges and flow meters. There will be identified as left and right gauge on the, and flow meter. 
Heart, your main reserve, and then the red point over the left gauge represents the pressure for the two large reservoirs that the reservoirs supply with all air operative devices on the locomotive unit. All air with the locomotive unit furnished with the line air compressor for the compressor will be unloaded with the pressure switch, usually set unload with the main reserve of the pressure reach of the 140 pound load. And again, when the main reserve drop pressure drops between 120 and 128 with the main pound, then one of the main reserve systems is charged. They will fluctuate between the 125 to 140 pounds. Should unloading switch fail to operate the safety valve with the sets off, the hop of hop off with the 150 pounds relieve the pressure. Charging the main reserve system at the time of the pressure is less than 15 pounds above the regulating valve, it would be advisable to center the reverser over the, locomo- over the locomotive, open the generator field switch to speed the engine up until the intermediate throttle to make the air compressor supply air faster. On some locomotives, you should continue the operating continue this operation until the main reservoir pressure is 15 pounds higher with the regulating valve setting this if the if it's, it's if it is a waste of fuel continuing the reviving the engine if the main reserve 15 pounds higher regulating valve setting on the um, some electric motor diesels locomotive if the engine um, speed is automatically go to number two number three throttle at any time of the main reserve pressure drops to 100 below 120 pounds on the GE-8 and Dash 9 locomotive, the advancing throttle number one will give the maximum air pressure compressor speed. Any further advancement throttle will cover the air compressor speed to decrease. Your equalizing reservoir. There, this this is the white pointer on the left gauge that represents the amount of the above air, about 220 cubic inches, approximately three quarts reservoir, small volume of the air, and relay valve with the automatic brake valve. The function of the re- reservoir to control the amount of the brake pipe production. For instance, we're going to make an automatic brake application of 15 pounds. We remove the automatic brake handle, cover the equalizing reservoir to reduce the 15 pounds. This would only take a couple of seconds. A very small volume of the air is exhausted. The brake pipe the air reduce air would be reduced to the valve. The volume of the air brake pipe is larger than. 330 gallons on a 100 car train, it would take about 15 to 30 seconds of the volume exhaust to exhaust and would be very difficult to measure. So, we are equalizing reservoir gauge and making the alter of the brake applications because of the brake pipe is controlled by the equalizing reservoir. If we lower the equalizing reservoir, the brake pipe will reduce accordingly. If we re rave the equalizing reservoir, the brake pipes raise accordingly. The only instance where equalizing reservoir does not control the lead brake pipe is during the emergency brake application when the brake valve cut out valve with the double heading cock is cut out. If the emergency brake application was caused by moving the automatic brake valve to the emergency position, the brake pipe was reduced to zero immediately and the equalizing reservoir would follow in a much slower weight. The equalizing reservoir would take approximately 15 seconds to reduce to zero. If the emergency brake application was caused by the train separation or burst air hose, other un- unknown reason, the brake pipe would immediately reduce to zero, but the equalizing reservoir would not be affected. Brake pipe. This is the white point over the middle right gauge. The measure for the amount of the brake pipe pressure for the automatic brake valve on the lead unit. It does not necessarily measure for the brake pipe and the pressure on the intermediate or rear of the car train. Although the brake valve will attempt to supply with the equal pressure throughout the train, resistance airflow of the brake pipe would cover the gauge to show the full pressure long, the same pre- long before the same pressure obtained with the car further back of the train in May. Never reach the same value with the rear of the train. The difference of the pressure of locomotive on the head end of the train and the rear end rear is referred to the brake pipe gradient should be not exceed fifteen pounds. Um Locomotive brake brake cylinder, the red pointer of the middle of the right gauge that represents any pressure for the brake pipe cylinder on the unit, regardless of how it is applied. The brake of the locomotive is applied two ways. At any any time the local brake pressure is a reduced or reducing the locomotive brakes will apply. The pressure will show on the brake cylinder gauge. If the locomotives will all apply any time that the independent brake is placed in an applied position, this pressure would also register on the brake cylinder gauge. All right, this is your old type, and this is your new type airflow uh, m- m- meter. Um, both locomotives equipped with the two six L brakes have the flows and purpose for these two, indi- two is to indicate the airflow for the automatic brake valve with the brake pipe pressure. There are two air service types of flow meters. One new, newer units flow meter will be placed over the right gauge on the older units. It will be on the top of the console integrated with the IFC or ICE screens. Flow meters have, 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 num- have numbers of the markers which do not necessarily indicate the air pressure and power. But they have two points for the black and red. Some of the flow meters white and the red on the others. Black and white pointers are controlled with the amount over the air flowing through the brake valve. The red point is controlled manually by the engineer. We have all the same small pilot light, which lights up and stays in the, as long as the airflow through the brake valve exceeds the predetermined setting. When first coupled the train, cut out on the air of the brake pipe of the train is empty, but the practical empty takes of the, a lot of the air to charge the flow indicator handle on the flow of the meter will swing on the right with the least pilot will come in and be equipped as brake with the pipe filled with the demand less air to supply with it as the flow indicator with the start moving the back to the left with the merely indicated that it's not so much as much air is moving through the air brake valve to the brake pipe. The higher brake pipe 
The higher the brake pipe becomes charged, the further to the left, the lower the lower inlet flow indicator. The flow meter is equipped with a pilot light. The light will go out when when the black hand flow indicator returns about to the number four on the gauge. Uh, the, the pilot light will remain until unless the rate of the, of the air flow is enough to cause the black hand to move higher than the number four position on the gauge. We can use the flow meter to determine when the brakes of the train are released. After the brake pipe reduction has been made, relief of the flow meter indicator move to the right or over the pilot light will come on. The good way to determine when the brakes in the train has release, have released is when the indicator returns to the near where to a near where it is before the brake application. On some trains, especially cold weather, the indicator will stay on high mark, indicating a high rate of flow, and the pilot light is equipped will remain on remain on for a long periods of time after the brakes have been released. This does not necessarily mean that you have braking trouble. It simply means taking a lot of air, keeping the brake pipe charged. Determine the leak that has developed the brake pipe after the fully charged and the indicator of the low mark of manually just the red point, barely to the right of the black and white, depending on the type. Um, one, if, if the black and white pointer passes with the red one, the indicator rises suddenly, it will indicate that there is no now taking more air with the supply of the brake pipe, possibly a leak that was developed on flow meters equipped with the pilot light with the black light and white indicator move to the right path of the number four mark. The pilot will come in the boy on as a warning leak. The automatic brake valve is set for self-lapping pressure maintaining brake valve. This is a brake valve with design made panel mounting the resulting on the brake valve handle when the cutoff pilot valve and the double heading cock being visible on the face of the panel. Our position of the automatic brake valve 26L automatic brake valve handle has six positions. Your release is to your far left. The minimum reduction is to the next next to the release. The service in between the full service the, the release minimum reduction is a full service um, um, in the service zone. And then you have your suppression, your man, handle off, and emergency. The six position range left and then right with the release of the minimum of the first service of the service suppression handle with the off of the emergency release back the brake handle with extreme left position with the quadrant is relieved the position the position chart of the brake pipe releasing the locomotive and the train brakes. Minimum is first service proportion. The position against the first raised portion of the right with the release position move the handle of the position cause the minimum brake pipe re 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 reduction pipe reduction six to eight pounds. First service zone. The first service zone consists of the service sector of handle movement of the quadrant from the minimum service position to the full service position movement of the handle of the right zone. In the right zone, will reduce the brake pipe proportionally amount of the movement of 23 to 26 pound brake pipe is made in the full service position. The 26L brake automatic lap maintain of the brake pipe pressure at any point with the movement and handle to stop the full service position extremely right. The service next to but not against the second raised portion of the quadrant move the handle with the light to the position result in 23 to 26 pound brake pipe reduction with the which is enough to cover the locomotive brakes to fully apply suppression position. Position of the, again to the second raised portion of the quadrant and immediately beyond the full surface position, additionally providing 23 to 26 brake pipe reduction recovery penalty brake application obtained. Second surface zone of the raised portion of the right suppression position continuation of the surface zone with the achieved with the desired lower the brake pipe reduction 23 to 26 pound reduction. Second surface zone will reduce the brake pipe pressure proportionally with the handle movement of 23 to 26 pound reduction to 10 pounds if the handle is moved all the way to the handle off position. The handle off position. The position located at the first notch beyond the suppression position is the position equalizing reservoir will reduce the zero of the brake pipe will reduce the ten pounds of pressure of the brake valve handle is also um, placed in this position on, tra on trailing units. The handle is normally removable in, the, in this position. However, on most locomotive units, the automatic brake valve handle is our pin in place that cannot be removed. All right, your emergency position. Um, the position is located at the extreme right with the brake quadrant. It is used when it is desired to make an emergency brake application with the automatic brake valve. It is used for recovering the brake valve with the emergency brake application from any source. The position of the brake pipe is reduced immediately to zero. Or this show the portion of the automatic brake valve. You have your relay, relay valve, the regulating valve, the brake pipe cutout valve, your vent valve, your emergency valve, your suppression valve, the equalizing reservoir cutoff, the brake valve for a 26L locomotive, um, brake um, cutoff valve, and independent brake valve on the bottom. All right, A, the brake valve cutoff valve with the double heading cock, the handle with the cutoff pilot valve with the visible with the face automatic brake valve with the first simple railroad language referred to the cutoff cock with the double heading cock with the, we, we, with the device with the cutting and then cutting out with the automatic brake valve. There are two, three position cutoff pilot valve with the double heading cock with the north folks of the lo locomotive units. Find out that there are two position, one division with a foreign line locomotive units are equipped with three position type of the encountered. Three position freight in, 
Freight or in the imposition brake valve is cut in and the control brake of the pipe with the movement in the, of the of the handle. Out of the brake valve is cut out with the middle control of the brake pipe and in this position main, maintaining feature for the brake valve eliminated. Passenger in this position the brake valve is cut in and the position was designed with the use of the passenger change relief by the can be grad, graduated and can call and could cause premature accidental release with the air brake of the cutoff pilot valve which should not be used in this position. B. Regulating the valve and feed valve, the self lapping type of the regulating valve is operated with the surface of the cam fastened into the rotated automatic brake valve handle. The valve regulates for the pressure of the valve and equalizer reservoir. Adjusting the equalizer reservoir pressure can be made with the turning of the adjusting screw, screw of the regulating valve fastening with the knob located, knob located on the left side of the automatic brake valve. The knob is commonly used with the feed valve to increase the pressure for the top knob. Turn the knob clockwise to lower the pressure. Turn the knob counterclockwise. All right, movement of the automatic brake valve handle in the service port sector caused the regulating valve to reduce the equalizing reservoir of valve of the portion over the handle with the movement of the complete with reduction of the equalizing reservoir is obtained with the brake handle placed in the handle off position. The synopsis of the above the same that one regulating valve is set within the automatic brake valve handle in the release position each time the, foot, the brake valve handle is moved away from the release position we change the value, value of the setting. Or C, the relay valve portion. The portion considered the diaphragm operated the relay valve. The valve portion purpose is to cover the pressure of the brake pipe to equal the equalizing reservoir. It will either reduce the brake pipe pressure for the supply of the brake pipe according with the value of the equalizing reservoir. The brake pipe pressure is used to charge the brake pipe system on the locomotive as well as the cars and the train. On one side of the diaphragm mentioned above the equal, equal above the, having the equalizing reservoir pressure on the opposite side of the will have the brake pipe pressure. The two pressures will tend to be equal, reducing the equalizing reservoir, result in a like amount being exhausted. Of the brake pipe side, but the two until the two sides are exhaust are equal. This will say that so this this is why we say the two six L automatic brake valve self lapping brake uh, valve should be leak should a leak occur in the brake pipe to supply the port automatically open the bring pipe open to bring the brake pipe pressure equal to the equalizing reservoir. This is why we call the brake valve self maintaining brake valve. D the brake pipe cutoff valve. Um, the valve cuts off the brake pipe, leaving the automatic brake valve. Leaving the automatic brake valve, the valve, valve can, will go into the cutoff position following ways: by turning the brake valve cutoff valve double head and cock to the out position, and two, why emergency brake application occurs on the locomotive from any service. The vent, the E, the vent valve. The valve is cam operated with the brake valve the hand handle shaft. When the automatic brake valve handle is placed in the emergency position, all air in the brake pipe is vented and very, very rapidly through the through the very valves to the atmosphere. Um, out of the emergency valve, the valve is operated with the plane of the automatic brake valve handle in the emergency position. There are three functions. They provide the tripping of the positive control switch. The valve is uh, equalizing reservoir pressure to the atmosphere. Recha recharges the device necessary to recover the emergency brake application. We'll discuss this um, device later. All right, suppression valve. Having the valve to operate with the automatic brake valve to play with the suppression and point position at any point with the quadrant with the right suppression and position the suppression valve that allows the main reservoir to charge the application reservoir back to normal after a penalty application. Also, acts to reset the auxiliary device that caused by the brake supply with the application reservoir to drop the approximately brake pipe pressure. We'll discuss in the device later. H. Equalizing reservoir cutoff valve. The valve is affected by the position of the brake valve cutoff with the double heading of the cock of the position the automatic brake valve handle. The double heading cock is turned out and two freight air in position. The valve is always open with the automatic brake valve in the release position. Moving the automatic brake valve handle away from the release position. Close the valve lowers the equalizing reservoir pressure. The only way that you can restore the equalizing reservoir pressure is by placing the brake valve handle in the release position. Then the valve opens the equalizing reservoir pressure with the restored into the regulating valve feed valve setting. The pipe pipe that will follow the release of the brake. When the brake valve cut off, valve cut off, valve double heading cock of the reposition is the position of the passenger position. The valve of the equalizing reservoir cut off and is handled, held open at all times. Moving out of the brake valve handle away from the release position service sector with the cup of the equalizing reservoir pressure to reduce the portion of the movement until the brake is completely exhausted. This is controlled by the relay valve. However, the movement of the brake handle toward the release position cover the equalizing reservoir pressure to rise proportionally to the handle movement until it is made completely restored to the release position. Since the brake pipe pressure will raise lower along the real equalizing Reservoir, restoring the equalizing reservoir pressure to two three pounds would result with the brake or pipe raising a similar amount, which would result with the accidental release of the brakes on the freight train. Independent brake valve, um, the brake valve located on the front of the control stand below the automatic brake valve, and then provides the independent control of the locomotive brakes regardless of the brake pipe pressure. Independent brake valve has two positions: release and full in, um, release and full independent application. The release. Um, this is when the handle is extreme left applied movement to the right cause uh, might cause the locomotive brakes 
selling pressure to build up in a proportional movement of the flow application of staying to the handle with the rugs in extreme right position, stopping in the handle at any point with the application cause of the independent brake valve of the lap, maintaining the application bla- bailing off the depression independent brake valve handle any with the position result releasing locomotive brake selling pressure developed as a result of the brake pipe reduction and automatic brake application. Multiple unit um, 2A valve or 2 position cut out cock. The device is used with the cut in or cut out of the independent brake valve. This show of the multiple and 2A cut out, cut in or cut out brake valve. Um, 2 position cut out cock. Um, enclosed in trail or dead. Leader dead or trail. On North Folk, Southern Locomotive, some of the three points other than wise than two. Leader, de- leader, dead position. The position brake valve is cut in with the independent brake valve with the control brakes of the locomotive. The trail 626. 626 and 24, either with a two position will cut over the independent brake valve, multiple unit 2A valve is set within one of these positions any time the unit is trailing and consists with a multiple unit 2A valve, the set is in the tra- trailer position, independent brake valve cannot control the brakes alone pressure. Are right, your 26F control valve quickly re- quick release portion pipe bracket service portion? We when you either use it when well, we use either the Westing or the new air brake um, 26F control valve. This will be located on the new the crew cab floor board. The control valve provides application for the locomotive brakes when the air brake reduction relief of the locomotive brakes of the brake pipe is restored. Our right, position of the 26F control valve. The 26F control valve consists of three portion pipe break with the part of the ply of the tank to the service portion. The service portion of the 26F control valve was recalled with the brake of the line locomotive until the air ply at any time the brake pipe pressure was being reduced for any of the recent. Also called the brake pipe to relieve the brake pipe pressure restored with the service portion is capable of distinguishing between the surface emergency application and the rate of the reduction, but the amount of the reduction it contained with the two pressure limiting valves is all one limited is the amount of the pressure for the 16 pipe, which go to the J relay during the service brake application other limits of amount of the pressure for the 16 any pipe any time of the brake pipe pressure goes under 20 pounds the setting of the valve limiting of the surface brake um, can be adjusted if the other cannot if the other cannot the surface limiting valve is set to 80, 58 pounds of brake pressure if the brake handle is in place in surface full full surface position uh, the service portion of the 26F control valve also provided the charging reservoir necessary to furnish the power bra- proper brake operation, nam- namely the auxiliary reservoir. As leaving the reservoir during the brake pipe reduction goes to the 16 point of the JR- J relay valve, causing the brake cylinder and pressure to develop in the locomotive of the unit. All right, your quick re- release portion. The portion provides the release for any locomotive brake cylinder pressure to develop the result of the brake pipe reduction. The accomplishment of the reeling off the depressing of the independent brake valve handle. Anytime the brake pipe reduction is made with the independent brake valve handle, must be depressed if the locomotive brakes are, are kept by, from applying. Your J relay valve shown in this picture. Um, on Northern Soul Folk locomotive unions, we use the number of the different J relay valve. These and relay purpose of the, of the supply of the exhaust and the locomotive for the brake selling pressure during the application release of the brake to develop the brake selling pressure on the locomotive portion. For the reference signal reference from either independent brake valve or the automatic brake control valve. Some of the J relays will create the brake selling pressure lower than the control single. This is known as the step down. Step down will identify the such of the letter than B. The following with the J relay number. So this is J sixty. Four relay the B indicates um, that the use portion signal is not is an in shot signal. Sign- the signal is very val- valuable in seven to ten pounds. Signal B and this is B type relay is step down relay. A signal less than ten pounds would develop very lo- um, little brake cylinder pressure. So the in shot signal is developed on a pound to pound for basis. So ten pounds of brake cylinder pressure is developed. The balance of the signal depends develops brake cylinder pressure on a percentage basis. Other stand pressure with reference signal automatic brake valve two six F control. Vi- Valve is to the J valve pressure is always at 58 pounds with the automatic brake is placed in full service position. By using J relays, we use the, we successfully multiple unit locomotives designed with the different brake cylinder pressure. The standard reference signal with the relay that was created with the independent equalizing the application release pipe. It would it, if we could put a gauge in on this pipe, it would read 45 pounds of pressure, and the independent brake was fully applied. Since some of the some of the J or J relay valves even in the Norfolk Southern are J sixty four B relay J sixty four relay is sometimes some of the SW fifteen or GP thirty eight some other locomotive units with the thirty two pound brake spill pressure of the class type brake shoe. J eighty four B with the um the J eighty four B relay is used in some of the Conrail locomotives, mostly six axle diesel locomotives. Used will have thirty six pound independent brake out of cylinder pressure and approximately twenty eight pounds of automatic brakes is is applied full service. 
the J14 relay. The J14 relay is you with the locomotive, you with the equipped with the class type. Brakes composition brakes you. The brakes are very effective. They have therefore less of the brake cylinders, um, less pressure on the brake cylinder needs to have sort of the same stopping power of the signal shoe system. The J14 relay valve mostly used on new units such as the C36 C7 or some of it is SD42, SD15, C37, D. Uh, 37. These locomotives units with 40 pound, pounds of independent brake pressure and 23 pounds of automatic brake pressure in the full full service position. J1.4 14 relay. When this type of the relay, the U23B and U30B locomotive units, these units will have 63 pounds of independent brake pressure and 58 pounds of pressure in the automatic brake placed in the full service position. The J1616 valve, the J1616 uh, relay valve is using a GP3082, GP50, GP60, SD40, SD50, SD60-8-9 locomotives. These units will only have the brake shoes on one of the side of the wheels. They will uh, use the higher brake cylinder pressure. These locomotive units uh, will have 72 pounds of independent brake pressure and the 58 pounds of the pressure automatic brake is placed in the full service position. The J1 relay valve. The J1 relay valve is simply the most of uh, simplest of all the relay valves. It is a single diaphragm and ability to valve out pressure with identical to the input and pilot pressure. The relay valve is used in some of the former Conrail locomotives, mostly four axle locomotives. These locomotives will have 45 independent brake pressure. When the independent brake is applied fully, then 58, 60 pounds of pressure when the automatic brake applies in the full service position. Alright, your P2A brake valve, the P2A application valve, the functions automatically with operation safety control, crew, crew, crew call, crew call, all loader, auto, train stop, locomotive, locomotive speed limiter, a dead man pedal to give the penalty brake application, air application chamber is automatically maintained in the main reservoir pressure. If the P2A has not been tripped, should, um, should the engineer failure, fail the reset alert, um, crew call, any other safety devices in the air application, um, chamber would start venting of the atmosphere, the venting is through, choke whistles electronic audible alarm to give the engineer warning if the application chamber is exhausted exhausting all right the venting air sh air start of the application chamber the main reserve pressure the when the lower to the near brake pipe pressure the p2a brake application valve to actually cover the brake on locomotive to apply at service rate so if the air of the application of the van is slow with the choke that usually takes five to six seconds for the chamber to reach for the brake pipe suddenly so any time the engineer correct with whenever the causing the application chamber to exhaust some such that resetting the crew collar alerter has stopped the exhaust of the alter application chamber the pressure return to the main reservoir pressure brake application will now be received and will not be received so whenever the whistle blowing of the application is venting we have the about six seconds to correct the cause if we do not correct the cause the application pressure will vent to brake near the brake pipe pressure at which the p2a valve will cause the penalty that you occur. Activating the positive control switch, this should cause the locomotive until the RPMs to return to the idle and set loss and lift the generator to the alternator. Equalizing reservoir will start to reduce the surface rate with the brake fan with the release position ram of the brake pipe, but it's also reducing the same rate. The amount of equalizing reservoir will depend on the locomotive in the unit until they are operating on some locomotives. The equalizing reservoir will exhaust 25 pounds at the surface rate of the exhaust stop. We'll stop the other locomotive unit equalizing reservoir will exhaust and the zero pressure um, any construction lanes when, when that when the penalty brake application received the train must be brought to a stop. If the penalty is received, the engineer should move the automatic brake handle to the suppression position as soon as the air exhausts the train starts exhausting after the train is equipped um, stop there the pinch positive control light goes out. Release the brake and proceed with the note on some of the locomotive unit the air brakes may have the release the, before the positive control lay. Go, will go out on the all unit throttles must be played ideal with the positive control light go out. The A1 charging cutout pilot valve. The A1 charging cutout pilot valve looks like this. This valve is you with the brake and two protection on the locomotive and the train. The locomotive separates the guys of the brake pipe. Air pressure to reduce the rate of faster than the surface rate. The A1 charging cutout pilot valve comes in action, performs the following functions. Cuts off the flow of the brake pipe air from the automatic brake valve on the lead unit equipped with the 26L brakes. Trip to the positive control switch. Um, on locomotive, the unit's equipped with a 20-second relay on the positive control switch. The item 2 is activated with the delay of the device and installed with the A1 charging cutout valve. 
All right, to reset the A1 charging valve after undesired emergency brake application, the automatic brake valve must be placed in the emergency position left sufficient amount of time. The brake handle is placed in the emergency position. When the equalizing reservoir reaches zero, the A1 charging valve should be recharged. The automatic brake valve can be now returned into release position after pausing the handle off position to recover the positive control switch. On some locomotives units with a 20-second delay of the positive control switch will not go out until the brake is relieved. The brake pipe pressure is partially restored. Anytime the emergency brake application, either desired or undesired automatic brake handle must be replaced the emergency position as soon as the positive control switch activates until the train stops. Our electro-pneumatic locomotive brake, um, brake system. Um, Happy New Year's. I'm going to cut the tape right here at 1 hour and 17.